dental x-rays, are they dangerous? How often do you need them and why would you need them? What's up guys, Dr. O here. Happy Tuesday. Man, I hope you're having an awesome day. You look great today, by the way. Good to see you smiling. Man, we got some good news in the Olsen household and our little guy, Riley. For all you parents that are dealing with potty training, it actually does work at some point. We got a poop on the potty Sunday. Thumbs up if you like, if that's awesome, right? Your, your child poops on the potty, parents will understand. It's a big deal. Uh, we've been fighting this one for probably a month and a half, maybe two months. It's too bright, sorry, I gotta put the sunglasses on. But and It's pretty exciting to actually have your three-year-old finally poop on the potty. That means I am finally moving out of diaper changing land, so. All right, well, you know, enough about that. Let's get on to uh, the, the dental stuff, but there's a, a video of him enjoying his new bed, by the way. He's in his new race car bed. Who likes cars? Loving it. So, Dexter, you haven't said hello in a bit. Where's he at? Dexter. There he is. Okay. All right. Say hello. Say hello, YouTube. Yeah. All right. So, let's talk about some x-rays. So, are they dangerous? And there actually is uh, some risk, while it's incredibly low, um, there is a, is a risk to taking any sort of x-ray. Um, we call it the Alara principle is kind of how we want to operate and that just means as low as reasonably achievable. I think I'm correct on that. Yeah, somebody call me out if I'm wrong, but it's as low as reasonably achievable. And what that essentially means is don't do more than necessary because you're only supposed to use it uh, as a benefit to the patient. So. And for in our practice, a couple of things that help us with that is we, we make certain that we use a, um, a digital x-ray, which requires less radiation to expose the sensor and get a quality picture. Also, you don't want to take x-rays too often or more than necessary. So for what, what that means for our practice, it, it, an initial patient, right, an initial visit, we've never gotten to meet before. We don't know what's going on. Uh, especially if it's been a while and we can't get records from your previous dentist, we're gonna take a full mouth series, that's 18 x-rays, and to compare that to um, you know, your risk with radiation, it's so incredibly low that it, it's really less radiation than you would get from going skiing for a week. Uh, there's, there's quite a bit more radiation from getting up in higher elevations, and getting the, the cosmic radiation from the sun, and uh, not, not being at sea level and having the protection of the, the layers. Sphere. So, you know, you wouldn't really think about canceling your ski trip to go to Denver and then go out to the nice Colorado Rockies and do some skiing. But uh, you might wonder, are the x-rays safe or am I going to be risking myself any sort of health there? So, while I said, like I said, it, there's always some, it's incredibly low. It's hardly, hardly measurable as far as the risk. Um, so if your dentist is, is providing you excellent care, and everybody's got their little bit of philosophy on when they would take x-rays, but most of us are doing a great job at essentially only using them when necessary. There, the, there's some ideas out there that maybe we make a bunch of money off of x-rays, and I'll just help you understand. It, the amount of money that's made on the x-rays barely is enough to cover the, the cost of the equipment and what's really necessary to give that. So. It, there's no way that I think any dentist is over diagnosing x-rays to try to make um, an income. So I know that might be some people's thoughts. So I wanted to kind of make that fairly clear. Which kind of x-rays uh, is another question, right? I mean, we take um, in our full mouth series for a new patient, we're gonna take some PAs or periapicals. They're basically allowing us to see the root surface. So to see if you've had a root canal or if there's an infection or if there's some deep decay, making certain that everything's healthy down at the root of the tooth. Uh, the other x-ray we take is called a bite wing. The example I use here is that uh, some bite wings, we wanna make certain that uh, in between your teeth, so if you're a soda sipper, a sweet tea, coffee with creamer, though, anything with sugar in it and you sip on it daily, you're at a higher risk for getting cavities in between your teeth. I did a video on that. I think it's something about does sugar really cause tooth decay? So you can watch that one. But 
In that video, I talk about the risks of tooth decay from low dose sugar over time. It causes cavities in between teeth, which you can't see. Many times they don't even hurt, you don't feel them. So the only way we're gonna find them is if we take x-rays. So if you're not getting routinely getting x-rays, you're at a higher risk for those type of cavities, especially to get larger on you uh, without you knowing about it. So on this one, you can see we found an overhang on an older filling, uh, I don't know where this patient is, it's a new patient, but they had a filling done by a dentist a while back and it looks like there's an overhang there. We wouldn't know that if we didn't have an x-ray because you couldn't see that. But now we know, hey, we gotta redo that filling, get that cleaned up and make that nice so the gums don't have um, any irritation from that overhang and that filling. So that's, those are some of the benefits from x-rays, being able to see what you can't see when you're looking around on the top of the tooth. So if you're not getting x-rays routinely, and in our practice for bite wings, we usually do once every uh, year, because we wanna make sure that, now I've seen some decay get pretty bad, especially in the course of uh, three, four, five, six months, especially if it's undiagnosed. Um, cavity's been there for a while, and it, you know, sure, get in that spot and really feed the, the bacteria. Cavities can grow fast, so once a year getting a good set of bite wings would be a great idea for the dentist to be able to figure that out. Uh, and then as far as PAs or the, those images that shoot at the root of the tooth, those are less frequent because we don't really need to see the root of the tooth very often. Everybody's gonna be a little different on that. We are mostly gonna only use them as needed. So if there's pain or a problem, uh, but, uh, or, or once every maybe five years. So not too often because it's just not really necessary. Hopefully that helps you understand x-rays, what kind of x-rays we might take and why. Another one that we have that's a little unique, I don't think a ton of practices have, and that's the 3D x-ray. We take a 3D x-ray when there's missing teeth, so we can look at the ridge and see if an implant's possible. We do it when we can't figure out if there's a tooth that's hurting and a pa patient can't pinpoint which one it is. The 3D allows us to see a little more detail. I uh, used that today on a lady just to figure out what was going on. It was very helpful, so um, definitely a, a good tool for us. And that kind of spins around the head. You'll see in this example, the x-ray goes around the patient's uh, head and does a 3D analysis. It's, once again, pretty low dose radiation. So if you were to take a CT scan, this is one one hundredth that amount of radiation. So I know there's a lot of questions about x-rays, probably boring for some people to talk about that, but hopefully this gives some information, some clarity that uh, dental x-rays definitely make the, the pros and the benefits far outweigh the risks when you're talking about keeping and maintaining your teeth and spending a lot less money on your teeth, not letting problems get worse, so you're, you're, you're constantly treating a really big problem rather than a very easy, simple problem. So definitely go to a dentist regularly, get proper x-rays, and you should be in great shape there. Um, so for tomorrow, I wanted to talk about, tomorrow we're gonna to talk about missing teeth. Which teeth are okay to be missing? Um, and how many teeth do you really even need to go through life, right? I mean, how many? So we'll talk about that a little bit. I know there's, that's a question we get often is I got, this tooth needs to come out or I've got a problem with this tooth. Should I get it taken out uh, or should I leave it or should I try to fix it? Um, so hopefully that'll be a, a good discussion. Um, I think that kind of wraps up today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something about x-rays or maybe you were just bored to death but you're still watching, awesome, good for you. Got some good announcements coming up soon. And maybe you're just watching for that because you're like, hey, he's gonna eventually talk about this free dentistry, the free treatment, and uh, we are, and it's going to be awesome, and I can't wait to announce that, get more details, but it's probably going to be a week or two, so just, you know, hang in there, but uh, you guys have an awesome, I guess, night, I'll see you tomorrow, have an awesome day tomorrow, catch you tomorrow and talk to, about, talk to you about balance and missing teeth, and uh, you keep smiling, it definitely looks good on you.